Okay. All right. Hey, 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 hey. Keep together. Drink. Hello, people. Hello. How are you doing? Been meaning to do this for a while. Um, basically what I'm doing today is I'm going to do a mini tutorial on how to use a BR-1200 and do your own blend CD. A lot of people have been asking me about how do you use that machine? How do you make an intro? What's up, Meek Meek? And I was like, it's too much for me to tell you over the phone. So I was like, I'm basically going to do a little tutorial. That way people can just watch it. I'll put it up on YouTube. And who knows, maybe it'll help somebody. So anyway, I'm going to show you what I use. This is what I use personally to make my blend CDs. So what we have here, this is where all the magic happens. This piece of machine right here does everything I need in order to make a blend CD. Let me turn this down. So basically, right, for DJs or anybody that want to be a DJ and want to learn how to make an intro, it's very simple. It might look complicated here, but it's real simple. So you have all these different tracks. You have track one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so on and so forth. I only go to seven. Actually, I don't even know what a lot of these things do on here. So if I don't know what it does and I'm not familiar with it, I leave it alone. That's why you see the volume down on these. This is like a built-in bass and like some drums and stuff. I don't need that. This is like another um, track right here that combines 11 and 12. I don't need that either. All I need is one through seven. So let's say you wanted to do an intro, right? So if you was to do an intro, you basically would put the beat on track one, right? Just the beat. And then on track two is where you would cut up your name. So let's say Meek Meek was doing an intro. She like, pick it Meek Meek, you put on the one and twos. Pick it Meek Meek, pick it, pick it, rock the party. It'll all go on this other track. So she might say, meek, meek. And then over here, you might be like, rock the party. And then over here, you might cut up it all night long. You know what I'm saying? So basically, you making a sentence out of different records. I'm going to give you a little example. So for this Mary Blend CD, I'm going to let you hear the intro and how I did it. And actually up here on the screen, you'll be able to see where the tracks are at and when they come in. Track one, track two, see that? Mixing records, mixing records, seven, four, seven. You see what I'm saying? That's track six. That's Steve Harvey right there talking on track six. Peace, Kamisha. How you doing? All right. So that's the gist of it. So if you notice, I had Steve Harvey talking. I like to use motivational speakers. So I'll put a motivational speaker on track two then i might have on track three air then I'm on track four alert and then on track five it might be like mixing records right so i'm making a complete sentence so once again if you look up here all you're doing is bouncing from track to track to track but in order to do that you got to come over here so you got to keep on pressing stop rewinding back to the part where you want to put your name at then you press record and then you might put it on track two. So when the part comes up, you cut it in. Then you got to go back, rewind it and repeat the whole process over again. That's basically how an intro works in a nutshell. So um, 
I'm gonna let y'all really look at this machine. This right here is part of the volume right here. This is gonna give you the volume control when you're actually recording. That's what that does. This right here, I like this button because this button, you can make like little markers along your CD. So I'm gonna show you an example. I can just skip right to where it's at. See what I'm saying? It's basically like a, me tracking up a CD, but it's no CD in here. This is all digital. It's a hard drive that's built in. So that's how that works. And this button right here allows you to mark in between the mixes. So when you get done with one mix, you mark it. And then if you make a mistake, you can clear it. You clear it and you make it go away. And then you remark it. And then that way you'll be able to bring it back to that specific mix or you can speed it up forward right here to a different mix um this right here these are punch ins and punch outs so let's say you wanted to put a certain mix in there right you might want to put mary or somebody in there at a particular time you can time the part where you want it to come in at that way you don't have to be over here while you're over here while i'm here i can't be jumping back and forth over here so this button will allow me to time it so it'll automatically go into record without me coming over here to press it this button this is pretty cool right here auto punch that's what that is zero basically makes it go right back to the beginning so i could be all the way 80 minutes 80 minutes into it and it'll bring it back to the beginning that's what that does obviously this is rewind this is forward um <laughs> what up leslie some people want to be DJs, so I got to do this tutorial. You never know. Um, yeah, so this is forward. Repeat. I don't even mess with this. Like I said, it's a lot of buttons on here I don't even mess with. Pan right here. This will change the screen, right? When I press pan, this will just pan it left or pan it right. I don't really mess with that too much. Um, you have the equalizer. I like the equalizer right here. Maybe I might put a song on here, right? And it may not have enough lows. It may not have enough highs or mids. I can come over here and I could readjust it. As you can see, the highs is moving right here. If you look closely, you can see when I start moving this, that moves. I keep that in the center though. I don't mess with that. Um, and that's basically how that goes. So I'm gonna let you see the back of this real quick. So the back, right? So I'm gonna keep this simple. If you're trying to play music out of here, you wanna come out. So you see that says line out? That makes perfect sense. You're going out, so you come out of this and you go in to the mixer. So that wire is going all the way out of there into here, into one of the phonos. That's how I get sound to come out. Now on the flip side of that, if I want to put sound into this digital recorder, I'm going to go in. So that means this will come out of here and it'll go in. It's, it's simple mathematics, but some people don't know it. So I'm going to just let you know. That's how that goes. That's how you basically hook up equipment. Um, just like with the turntables. Of course, the turntables are going to go out of here, into here, into the mixer. Same... Um, situation so with that being said um let me let you know about some other cool buttons on here okay before you record on here you got to tap this right and then you hit record and as you can see the record lights up we're not going to do that because i don't want to record over nothing yet but that's how that goes if i want to go on track two i tap this button i hit record and then when I'm ready to record, I hit play along with it. And um, that's basically how that goes. This is the master volume over here. And um, just like I said, this button over here will make it forward. It'll make it rewind. But you also have this cool button right here where you could just like swing it around and it'll automatically go to wherever you want to go. Like, right.
See what I'm saying? Or Or I could go right there, right to the beginning. Right to the beginning of the mix. So that's my mini tutorial on how to use a BR-1200. It's digital. I used to use an analog 8-track back in the days that took a tape. Of course, that's outdated. It'll sound muffly, it won't sound as clear. I still got it though, because it was an awesome A track. I'm gonna let you see it. This is what I used to use in the 90s right here. It takes a tape, so that means it's analog, but it was so easy to use, it's so simple. You know, it got its um, equalizer on it. You know, it has only four tracks, but really you don't need a lot of tracks. All you need is like, two or three four at the most that's plenty you got the pan buttons right here but that's old school right there the only reason why i kept that is because i still have old like eight track tapes that i need to play and i need to convert so i'll play it in there so i can convert it but um yeah that's like the gist of how you use the br1200 i don't really use every feature on here there's a lot of things on here and some of it is just pointless for what i want to do so for that reason i won't even use it you know maybe some of you guys or you women out there when y'all learn it y'all might know more than i know you know what i mean like i keep it simple k-i-s keep it simple that's it you know less is more so i don't try to get too fancy with it i just do what i can do um according to my understanding um, you know another tutorial I'm going to do? A scratching tutorial. Scratching, blending, transitioning. A lot of people want to know that. There's a lot of people out there with an ear for mixing, but they don't know the technical part of it. They don't really know how to mix. But in their head, they got the ear and they know what goes good with what. And I'm going to tell you something. People that have an ear for mixing, that's the most important quality you can have as a DJ. I know DJs that get busy, you know, technically sound, but they don't have an ear. This is the most important thing. If you got this, you're good. Because really, these days, a little baby can DJ. Like, anybody could DJ. Seriously. It don't really take much. Like, the technology will do all the work for you. You really don't have to do no work. And, and, and surprisingly, you still got people that are struggling with DJing. And, you know, it ain't like back in the days with just two records. Like, you really had to mix. You really had to know what you was doing. Now you don't really have to know. You just have to know the basics. So, um, once again, have an ear. If you got an ear, half the battle is won right there. And that's a whole fact right there. Um, so, uh... I don't know. I'll probably go into the mixing. Let's go into the mix. I put this up here. Right? So, you got people that want to learn how to scratch. Scratching isn't that important. I, I'm a scratcher. I'm a battle DJ. I'm a party DJ. I do a little bit of everything, but... The most important thing is transition. If you know how to transition, you're good. There's a lot of different aspects of DJing. You have people that know how to talk in the mic well. You got people that know how to get people into it. They know how to dance. They know how to, you know, they smile. They got great personalities. They get people all excited. That's a part of it too, you know? So my thing is, if I was you, I would just be versatile in all different areas make sure you know a little bit of everything all right so let's see what happens
another thing with technology. There's always some little uh, glitches that you gotta figure out. So, I don't know if y'all can see this. I'm gonna try to get it as close as possible so you can really, really see this. All right. I'm going to break it down as simple as I could possibly break it down to you. If you have good eyesight, you're good. It, it pays to have good eyesight. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to pay attention to this mark. It's a mark on every record. You might put a piece of tape on there for your own little marking, right? But it's always a mark. I use this right here. This right here has a little light on it. So wherever the beat starts... It might be at 3 o'clock. Think of it as a clock. 3 o'clock over here, 6 o'clock right there, 9 o'clock right there, 12 is right there. Right? So if you can see, this beat drops at 6 o'clock. <laughs> okay, Joanna, I'm going to break down the licking of the finger. People always ask that question. That's a great question. I'm going to break down why I lick the finger. You might see a lot of DJs licking their finger. When you lick your finger, it gives the, the finger a rich grip. Your grip is, is a lot accurate. It's a lot more sharper. You can grab the record. It's kind of like it makes it sticky or something. I don't know. It just allows you to grab it. It makes the finger rich. So when I go like that, my finger is, is going to catch it. what I'm saying so what up Taya what up Naomi um yeah so this starts at six so basically you're gonna be moving the fader every time that record moves bend it in bend it in bend 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 it in so that's how that goes simple I would say keep it simple because I'm gonna tell you a mistake some DJs make you try to do extra stuff that is a little too technical and then it comes out sounding sloppy just do whatever you can do whatever is within your capabilities master that even if it's basic master that and you're good the key to it is to make it sound clean that's the only rule that matters it should sound clean it should sound neat it should not sound sloppy. It should not sound off. It should just be really, really clean. And the way you get that clean sound is by mastering the basics. Don't try to overstep and do extra stuff. So basically, that's how you cut. I'm going to go deeper into that on a YouTube tutorial. That's just basic. So when it comes to mixing, let me hook this other turntable up. Mixing, once again, is the air. So when you mixing, you know that if the beat is like, you might be putting something with it like, I want to let you know that this is the only way. So boom, that's the Mary shit, right? You got the Mary coming in, and the beat, you know how the song goes, so just put the beat in on beat, on beat. So I'm gonna get something to mix with this Benjamin's. Everybody loves Mary, so I'm gonna pick a Mary. Because I know that most people know. All right, we gonna mix my love with Benjamin's. <laughs> Okay, 
now I'm gonna mix my love with Benjamin's. Now, when my love comes in, you know how Mary sings. She's like, oh, 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 baby. So we know how the song go. So in your mind, bring it in on beat, right? Once again, remember I told you about the clock, right? I told you about having your, your eyesight on point. So let's say the old part that she sings, let's say that starts at 3 o'clock. Whatever, right? Keep in mind it's at 3 o'clock. I'm going to put it on 3 just for you. Uh, 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 uh. I see that? That's 3 o'clock. So just listen to the beat, right? You know where it's going to start at. Alright, go with me. One, two, three, let's go. Pay attention. One, two, three, let's go. I remember I was teaching DJing at the charter school, Green Tech Charter School, and a lot of the kids were having problems with um, how to bring the mix in. For some reason, they couldn't they couldn't understand or hear when the song's supposed to come in. I said, do you know the song? Because that makes it easier. If you know the song, you know how the song goes, it makes it that much more easier to bring in because you know it. So I would pick these songs that they know and sometimes, I don't know, they might have been nervous. They might have been like uncomfortable, people around looking. But after a few times explaining it, they started to get it. They was getting it. So I make it sound like, of course it's simple to me. I've been doing it for a long time. But if you were to try this the first couple times, it might not work until you actually get into the beat. You see what I'm saying? You just know, okay, I know where to bring that in. But then you got to know how to bring it in like perfectly. That thing got to come in like flawlessly. You can't be messing that up. You can't mess that up. You got to make sure you drop it right. And when you drop it, you got to keep it on beat. This is why blending is way different from doing like a typical transition. No doubt, Leslie. I see you, Leslie. Exactly. 2020. Um, when you bring that thing in, you got to babysit it. I say babysit because when you blend in, sometimes the record will go off. That's why if you notice, if you watch DJs that blend, they kind of like going like this on the record or they might put their finger right here. I call Baby. this, I call this breaks. So if it's too fast, I'm going to touch this a little bit just to slow it down a little tad to make sure it stay on beat. Um, maybe it's too slow. I might have to speed it up with the pitch. Maybe it's too fast. I might have to slow it down with the pitch. But that comes with practice. Um, when I first started mixing, I didn't know how to blend at all. I didn't know how to do nothing. I was young. And my homeboy, DJ C. Nice from North Albany, he taught me. He said, yo, bro, you just throwing records together. It's not even mixing. You got to actually, like, make sure it's on beat. So once you know how to put it on beat, you're good. You're going to be A, A plus in the game. So let's do this one more time. how that goes.
Um, there's so many different aspects of DJing that I could talk about. You got flashing. You got what dudes be like going up under the legs, you know, behind the back, you know, all that. With the mouth. I get to that later. That's going to be like on a later note. I got to make sure I got that mastered and down packed because I want that to be clean. And um, when it comes to doing tricks and stuff, you might want to practice for like a good three, four hours just to prep yourself. Um, but other than that, you know, that's the basics. I felt the need to do that. I was going to go out later and um, make some runs. I think I'm going to do it tomorrow. It's kind of late. It's definitely kind of late. But um, I just wanted to do that. I wanted to let y'all know I'm going to start doing tutorials. I just thought it was time to do it because I haven't done it. And people was kind of asking me about it. So it was on my spirit. I said, you know, let me just start putting it out there. I think that I should be helping, giving back. It's no good if you don't give it back. Like, we all have some type of expertise in some type of area. We're all good at something. And if you're good at something, give it back. Give it back. It actually gets you sharper. Because when you're giving it back, you talking about it is refreshing your memory on it, keeping you sharp. So, um. I'm very, very uh, adamant about that. So, I don't know. I guess that's it. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get ready to go live. I think I'm gonna do like a classic reggae set. I got a lot of classic reggae. So I think I wanna get into like classic reggae. I wanna do different sets. Instead of just blending all the time, I think I'll do that. Then have like a new set. I know with my following, people that rock with me, they mainly like old school music. As I do too, but I wanna like dip into like different genres and just show a little more versatility. So with that being said, I'm gonna do like a new music set, reggae set, um, old school hip hop set, of course old school R&B set, Oh, a party set, too. I got some party joints, like, shake with your mom again, y'all. Can we come on, baby? Like, all that stuff. Doo Doo Brown and all that. Them fast records. Like, them real dance records. I got a set for that, too. And, um, I think it's just time to show a little versatility. So, I'm just giving y'all a heads up on that. It's time to, like, venture out. Do a little different. Some different things. You know? Broaden my horizons, as they would say. So, I don't know, I'm letting y'all into the studio. This is where it all happens at. I also got a controller over here. For you uh, DJs that are looking to start getting into the game, you know, the little controllers are inexpensive. Me personally, I like turntables, that's the best. But if you don't want to break your back, Plug in like these heavy turntables and mixers and all that. You have controllers like this that aren't bad. This is an old NS7 right here. Um, I have an NS7 III, a newer model, but this is decent. It's not that heavy. I, I actually have one that's smaller than this because this one it can get heavy when you got it in the case, it can get real heavy. Um, that's the other one that's in the case. I advise everybody to get a case. This right here protected. This one right here actually has wheels on it. So this is a good one. Um, I wanted y'all to see that. Uh, yeah. That's it. I don't have nothing else. How big he said it? What? Ain't no more to it. <laughs> Word. So, um, with that being said, man, I get it with y'all later, man. Ain't nothing else to talk about. Deuces.